I thank you. This will be a technical talk, but it's a technical talk being delivered at DEFCON. So you take your chances. Am I close enough? I don't know. I think it works. Does it work? Yeah. Hey, great. Okay. What I said was this it will be a technical talk, but it is a technical talk at DEF CON. So that is, uh, makes it a little bit special. I'm going to talk about the ATM machines. That's where I get all my money. I don't know about you, but I, if I need some money, Louder? I think, well, okay. The ATM machines and the ATM system, I'll be talking about vulnerabilities. Now, this is, this is going to be good. Pay attention. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to avoid being cheated by the ATM system. People lose an amount of money that you just wouldn't believe. It isn't just millions per year, it's more than that. Um, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have an accurate figure, but then I'm not a bank, so I don't care much. <laughs> of course, the other banks don't care much either. <laughs> now, here I am, uh, I'm standing in front of one of these here ATM machines, uh, and Louder again, oh Lord. Well, okay. I'm standing at an ATM machine in the little town of Kirkenes, Norway. Now, most of you have probably never heard of Kirkenes, but it is the furthest north city in the world. It uh, is uh, an amount above the Arctic Circle that I, I, really, I just don't even know. Uh, a story about Kirkenes. I was, it's hard to get any sleep there because if you visit in June, uh, the sun never goes down. Well, around midnight, I was walking around the town and talking louder and louder and louder. I was talking to a lady um, who I suppose lived there and I asked her, what country is this? And she said, well, I'm not sure. And went on to say, well, Norway plows the snow. Does that answer your question? Well, partly it did, and partly it did not. But the point is that I wanted some money, and I went to an ATM machine in this, uh, not godforsaken, that wouldn't be right to say that, but uh, <laughs> little town in extreme northern Norway, not very far from North Cape. North Cape, in fact, is the furthest north uh, uh, land in Europe. I wanted some money. Okay, so I go up to, yeah, hey. Uh, you've got to continually during this remember Willie Sutton. Willie Sutton was asked, why do you rob banks? And you know the answer. Yeah, you got it. Well, that's changed a little bit, and I'm talking about the slightly changed uh, arrangements nowadays. In that, it's not, not any longer really true that the money is in the in the bank. The money is actually in the ATM machine. And if you go up to a bank on Friday afternoon before a um, three-day weekend, you will find that the ATM machines at the bank have a lot more money than the bank had at any time during the week. It really, the amounts tend to be really enormous. For a three-day weekend, having $10,000 in the ATM machine is simply not enough at most banks. Okay, so what I do is I stick a card into the ATM machine. And this is a card, uh, you're going to say louder. <laughs> I may need help. 
I'll appeal for help if, if this gets much worse. Uh, so I stuck a card in the machine, and this is a card that was issued to me by my own bank in somewhere in central New Hampshire. Now the connection between extreme northern Norway and central New Hampshire is not particularly obvious. Uh, they are distant from almost any point of view that you take. The card that I was issued has a magnetic stripe on the back, and as it turns out, what's in that magnetic stripe is simply an address for the bank and some other uh, information, uh, other information about the bank and the account associated with that card. Uh, the uh, that's that's on that magnetic stripe on the back which you ought to learn more about from somebody else because there are some real problems associated with these uh, stripes on the back of, backs of cards. The machine then asks me for a pin and asks me how much money do I want. Hey, being a fairly honest guy, I mean, I'll tell them I want a reasonable amount of money. Uh, if I was different, I would say, well, just give me all of it. <laughs> some people do that. Now, uh, the machine, after it's got the pin, uh, gurgles for a while, and then in a surprisingly short period of time, usually of the order of 10, 20, 30 seconds at most, uh, delivers the money to me. Since I was in Norway, of course it delivers Norwegian kroner, whatever a kroner is, but... Uh, I suppose in English would be called a crown, but it's not, it's not that big a deal. Um, the, uh, so after I put my card in the machine, type in the four-digit pin, I, I walk away, and uh, the machine is now happy and the transaction is completed after it delivered me my money. Now, one question I have is that in this, in this whole transaction, where I inserted a card into the machine, typed in a pin, and undoubtedly there were messages going back and forth between various banks and things, things of that sort, a real question is, what happened? And to some degree, I'm going to leave that as a homework exercise for you. It's not easy. Uh, a surprising amount of attention has to be paid to uh, actually who knew what at the beginning of this process and what they found out, what information they sent, and what information they re received. Which I'll sum up by saying, what happened? It is not particularly easy. In fact, uh, the obviously the bank in extreme northern uh, Norway never heard of a bank in the boondocks of central New Hampshire. So somehow or other, messages had to be transferred back and forth between these two entities, which are not, from any other point of view, close to each other in any possible sense. And uh, so you have to remember that it's not clear with these messages just who is sending it to who and what information is being sent. That's the thing that you have to think about. And uh, I will help with that. Now, the parties to this overall transaction are me, that's the guy standing in front of the ATM machine, the bank in Norway that owns the ATM machine, and the bank in New Hampshire that, of which I am a customer. This is all not supposing that nobody was tell telling any lies or anything of that sort. It's all straight stuff. Um, now, there are a number of requirements that are particularly obvious as this transaction goes on. Uh, and the parties of the transaction have their own needs that may well not intersect to any degree. Uh, the customer, that's me, wants some money and does not want, obviously, the system to drain his checking account which is the kind of thing that might happen. I mean, you guys know about identity theft. Well, 
this is the same general kind of thing, different in detail, but about the same uh, in the general sense that you wind up with a heck of a lot less money and somebody else winds up with a heck of a lot more money. Uh, but the other, so I just want the money and I don't want the uh, system to drain my checking account. Uh, I also probably don't want my pin to be broadcast all over the world. A, the pin is something I care about, and uh, I would prefer to keep that a, a little bit close to the chest. The uh, bank in Norway has just distributed a thousand dollars or so. Oh, I'm sorry, a thousand kroner or so. And it wants some assurance that it's going to get back its money. Um, the, uh, and that's about it. I am not a customer of this bank, so it doesn't care about me very much. No, it knows that I'm not a customer. And it mostly cares about its own customers, not about me. The bank in New Hampshire, uh, I am a customer of that bank. They want to keep me reasonably happy. And, but they've got some other uh, problems facing them. They have to uh, make sure that I am really who I say I am, say I am and that I've g actually got the money in the account to pay this amount out. The, uh, uh, so it, want, it doesn't want a responsibility for, for example, a fake customer, a customer that's actually not the, per the person that, that he claims he is or she. Um, the bank in Norway uh, simply wants the whole transaction to settle down with it not either gaining or losing any money. Uh, again, I'm not a customer of that bank, but it uh, mainly wants to make sure uh, that it is someday reimbursed for the money it gave to me. It gave me a thousand something or other, a thousand kroner. And it, it wants to get that back somehow from the ATM system. Now, the ATM system is a very large, very widespread system uh, that exists all over the world, in fact. And I have used it in quite a few foreign countries, including Norway. Um, and so there are three pieces here. There's the ATM machine that you're standing in front of, the ATM system that in some sense is worldwide or very nearly worldwide. I, I know that it works in almost any European country. I was in Hungary last week. I didn't try it there. I don't know what would have happened, <laughs> but I guess. Uh, when I was staying in Budapest, I asked, is the uh, hotel air conditioned? The answer was, well, it has Hungarian air conditioning. Nice place, very pretty place. It does, uh, and it's not a third world country by any means, but uh, it is not quite up to our standards for uh, high, high uh, range hotels. Okay. We have these parties to the transaction. Me, the ATM, ATM that I'm in front of, the bank that owns the ATM, and then some network that I'm not going to describe. It would be bore you to tears. That actually connects all this together in a worldwide sense. And I'll call that just the ATM network. It is important. Without that, you wouldn't be able to use the ATM card in a whole lot of places without the ATM uh, network existing. Well, what, what does one have to do uh, to make all this work out? When you type the PIN into uh, the ATM that you're standing near, right behind you, over your right or left shoulder, there is a person who is 
busily writing down the pen you type, which you can easily see over your shoulder. Fine. Called shoulder surfing. And that is actually a major loss to the financial system because that kind of thing happens much more than you would believe. It is not just million, millions of dollars. It is more than millions of dollars. Uh, and that is the, uh, the first vulnerability I'd like to talk about, and it is a serious vulnerability. I would advise you when you're at an ATM and about to punch in your pin, just look over your shoulder, both shoulders, and see who is there copying it down. Uh, this is not unusual. It has not happened to me, but it has, for example, happened to my wife, where someone managed to see what pin she was typing in and used it to extract quite a lot of money from the system. There is normally some limit of the amount that you can get out of ATMs per day, and that limit is designed so that you don't go broke if somebody uh, steals your pin or your card. You just get a, a little bit poorer. So that is the first uh, vulnerability. Um, there are others. I was in, why am I talking about Norway? Well, I guess because I spent a lot of time in Norway last year. Um, I walked up to an ATM machine in the, the Bergen, uh, that's in Norway. And, uh, and I put in my card. It told me to punch in my pin. I punched in the pin. It gurgled for a while and then said, sorry, we can't pay you. Eh? It's got my, all the information on my card, which tells it all about my bank account. It's got, the, it's got my pin. And now it tells me it's not going to complete the transaction. What I did may seem a bit extreme to you, but I, I called the police, <laughs> told them, and also pointed out to the bank, which arrived just behind the police, that right to near my right hand was a fire axe. And if it didn't give me my card back, I was going to use that fire axe. Uh, actually, they caved in and paid me and gave me the uh, uh, card back, and in fact, no money had been withdrawn, so the, the whole transaction ended just fine. But still, a fire axe did uh, enter the negotiations. <laughs> um, the uh, what does this say? Why do my notes say at this point, forklift truck? Forklift truck? Give that man a prize. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, forklift truck deserved to be at this point in the presentation because it is the principal tool for uh, cheating ATM machines. <laughs> you slide it in, lift, slide it back, put it on truck, drive away, and at home, all you need is a uh, acetylene uh, cutting torch, and you have the thing open in 20 minutes. Uh, so forklift trucks are part of... By the way, I, I have promised that I, I will tell you before the end of this talk important things that you should do and not do when dealing with ATM machines, because I mean to send you away knowing a good deal more about the down-to-earth vulnerabilities of ATM machines. None of this high-flown theoretical stuff, just things like forklift trucks. It's important, and people do that. Uh, the, I can't estimate what the losses are to for forklift trucks, but they do exist, and it... Uh, It, it is mainly, in fact, a uh, Brit an, an American habit. The Brits have a slightly different habit. And that is 
Why am I all of a sudden louder? Somebody turn me up. Um, the uh, best deal at this point is you want to get money out of a uh, ATM machine. You go to uh, eBay, and eBay you, on eBay you buy an ATM machine. <laughs> hey, they'll sell it to you. They really are there, and they don't cost very much. It's actually in the general range of 10,000 bucks for an ATM machine. Now what you do is you install that ATM machine like right over there in some obvious place where people pass by and the ATM machine is reprogrammed. It's not a difficult repro reprogramming job so that when somebody puts their card in, punches the pin, it says, sorry, try again tomorrow. Uh, if you don't happen to have a fire axe, you've got a problem. The uh, but that is probably more the British scheme than the U.S. scheme, uh, though it doesn't matter very much. Uh, so what you have in this with this scheme is just you have a new machine, and I would advise you that if you see a ATM in a place where you've never seen one before, don't use it. Uh, the uh, well again I'm giving advice but uh, what can I say you want, to, you, you want to take a look in fact in the town I li live in several times in the last month in stores and restaurants that I normally go in I've seen new ATM machines I don't have any reason to believe they're fraudulent on the other hand I don't also don't have any reason to believe that they're honest I, so I typically do not use them. So uh, pay some attention to the place that the machine is, and if you run into a machine that you haven't seen before, uh, it would be wise not to use it. Another problem associated with the whole business of ATM machines, and it includes problems with debit cards and things of that sort also, is that banks, Big deal, honest banks all over the world, but I mainly know it from the U.S. and um, U.K. If you point out to them that they did not give you the money that you deserved and you got fraudulent charges on your either debit card or uh, checking out through the ATM machine, that they will simply lie about what has happened. There's several famous cases, both in the U.S. and in the U.K., where it was perfectly clear that the problem was solved by the bank's software, and the bank denied that it possibly could happen, and simply said that if the customer is claiming to have lost money uh, through... Uh, eh? <laughs> through an ATM machine or a debit card that the customer is lying. One of these cases actually came to court and was well defended, and the bank lost The bank lost very big. They still try to do that, but they do it with much less success now because after one big case has gone against them, uh, it uh, makes it more difficult. What they did in the first case was actually filed a criminal complaint against a person that was uh, uh, complaining about loss of money in, in, in the ATM system. And uh, that seems a little bit outrageous. But um, I better finish all this technical stuff so I can give you all this valuable advice that you want. Uh, the uh, Uh, yeah. The way that the system works, the first tr thing that happens 
when you begin an ATM transaction is that the the bank I'm sorry yes the bank associated with the ATM machine you're using sends a message to the bank that issued the ATM and there is not much that needs to be said that at that point and in fact essentially nothing is said the message that goes from the ATM machine through the ATM network to the issuing bank simply says hello I've got a message for you the response uh, is that uh, the uh, bank dreams up an encryption key and sends that key back to the customer this is fairly standard stuff nowadays in cryptography uh, there are any number of, of ways uh, associated with the uh, cryptographic uh, schemes where uh, encryption and decryption one is much more difficult than the other so oh dear so that uh, all you need to do is to send the one party to send a key to the other and now transmissions in the other direction become much much easier and this is not only a common but an almost universal practice in cryptography nowadays um, Okay. Look over your shoulder when you type in the pen. Important. Um, the uh, pay some attention to the place where you see the machine, and if you can, if you recognize something as being a new machine, go somewhere else. Um, the uh, A stolen card is not a much a terribly big deal. I don't know about you generally, but my bank will only let me withdraw uh, two hundred dollars per day uh, through the ATM system, which means that the amount of loss is relatively limited. I mean, that's annoying, but not absolutely disastrous. Uh, another piece of advice, though, is. The ATM, ATM machines mostly, after they give you your money and that kind of good stuff, and give you your card back, one hopes, uh, give you information in the form of a receipt. The receipt talking about what the account was, what the amount was, what the date was, things of that sort. And my advice about that piece of paper, that receipt, is don't leave it next to the machine. Don't simply drop it. Take it with you. Take it away from the machine. Take it with you. Because that plus the four-digit key, which the same guy has just read over your shoulder, is enough for him to drain a good deal of money out of your account. So when, when and if a receipt appears, take it with you. Don't leave it at the machine. And that makes it much more difficult. And... Uh, much more inconvenient for anyone to join the account. The other advice is, so, uh, I assume that some of you are going to need money in the next few days. Yeah, almost certainly. Uh, I recommend that when you want money uh, tomorrow and the day after, please get it from the ATM machine in the lobby of this, ho this hotel. And I don't need to talk anymore. Does anyone want to ask any questions? Or should I have talked about something? I didn't talk at all about cryptography, really. And one of the reasons is that crypto cryptography does not really come up as a prime problem. What the prime problem is, in fact, is key distribution. Uh, not the, it's not the algorithm that you use to do the encryption. It's who's got the key and where did that entity get the key uh, is, is the problem. And that's, that's worth discussing and talking about. And I've run out of data. Thank you for coming. Unless there's any questions. I see no questions. Have a good day.